Morning. Morning. I want to welcome you to worship on this fifth Sunday of Lent and a warm greeting to those of you uh, who are worshiping with us online and those of you who are visiting today. Uh, thank you for braving the, the spring snow that we had. Uh, it's not too bad outside, I didn't think, so it'll probably be gone pretty soon. I want to say thank you to our music ensemble as always and thank you for, for sharing your gifts and talents with us today. Uh, just a couple of announcements. After worship, we'll have our first communion class. So I'm looking forward to uh, spending some time with Greta and our first communion students. They'll be receiving their first communion on Monday, Thursday on Holy Week, which is coming right up quickly. Um, and then speaking of Holy Week and Easter, I think all of those times, the worship services are printed in the back of the bullets, and please read through uh, those. And then Easter lilies. If you would like to provide Easter lilies for our chancel area, please uh, take note of the details there. Um, I think that's all of the announcements, except I, I would be remiss if I did not say go Blue Jays, who everybody knows. There we go. Chris Hedekin knows how difficult that was for me to do, but I did wear, I did wear my Blue Jay uh, colors here today. And as a point of interest, Ronnie Schott, Pastor Schott's, uh, wife is there with her daughter in Louisville and son-in-law at the game. So if you tune in uh, to watch the game today, then you can try to find Ronnie in the crowd. So go Blue Jays and glad you're here today uh, as we celebrate with worship today and prepare our hearts and minds uh, for worship. I invite the congregation to please stand as you're able as we begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance in God's mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Here again the good news that God so loved the world that God gave His only Son so that it all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you in the spirit of power. Amen. Amen. I wanted to take a quick minute and mention the mission moment for Table Grace Cafe. I didn't know if the video was ready to be shown today, um, but I did want to mention that Table Grace is receiving the green envelope donations this month, and so we thank you for all the ways that you're supporting Table Grace Ministries. Um, Kyle, is the video ready? Okay, congregation, I'd invite you to be seated, and then I'll, I'll stand you up again when we're ready to sing the opening hymn. This is a video that one of our members here, um, Nick, was involved in our 10-day job experience program, and we just wanted to share the success of his journey as well as the success of the people who are journeying through that 10-day experience program with us at Table Grace Cafe. So again, thank you for your support, and here's the video. One thing that we do that's unique here that some of the other community cafes don't do is this job experience program. And, you know, there's several different reasons why people are homeless, but um, one opportunity that people have when they come here is to get some job experience. And 
it's very simple. Um, it's just a 10 day commitment. And if people work here with us for 10 days, teach them everything we can in that amount of time. And then at the end of the 10 days, they get a letter of recommendation from us with our letterhead, help getting a resume on paper for themselves, and then some coaching on going out and finding work. And then just this past year, we were able to start offering a $500 stipend for living expenses for anyone who finishes the program as well. Uh, my name is Nicholas Seda, and the first time I was brought to Table Grace, uh, Pastor Glenn from Morningstar brought me, and uh, we had a, a meal here before my court appointment down at, at the courthouse. Um, I decided to become a part of the 10-day job experience program um, because I, I wanted to get my feet wet in, in the industry and um, see if it was uh, something that I wanted to pursue further. The main thing that I want people to leave with is the confidence that they, they can go out and find a job because if they can work here for 10 days, they could do it for 20, they could do it for 60, they could do it for six months. My, my experience, I came to be a part of Table Grace seven years ago because I was struggling, on, struggling to be on in my life. came here every day to show that I was uh, responsible, reliable. And there's an awesome team here at Table Grace Cafe, and I'm not gonna lie, I miss working here with the team. They're amazing people too. I see a lot of confidence building. Uh, not, it's not so much the skills. Uh, if somebody wants the knife skills, I've been to culinary school, I will take the time and give them those knife skills. The biggest thing we give them is confidence. And I have seen a few of the people that I have spent all 10 days with go on to Omaha Prime and other places. My plans for the, f for the future once I, once I um, complete the program are to uh, potentially find a position in the, the food service industry and also uh, potentially go back to school and further my education. In the hospitality industry, in the food industry, a lot of learning is on the job. You learn as you go, you learn with experience. And so they start here and we hope that's a stepping stone for going out and finding work in a regular restaurant. Um, but the confidence and the belief in themselves that they, they have the ability to, to do it and to actually find a job and to hold down a job. Um, so that's the main thing that, that we hope they get. to invite you to stand and join in singing our opening hymn.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We wait for the Lord, our souls wait, and in God's word of life we place our hope. God says, I shall cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. Our souls wait for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. From the stale places and stenches of our world, God says, come out of the tomb and live. We hope for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love and great power to redeem. Into faithful hearts, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will never die. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated, please. The first reading this morning is from Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, where we learn about them bones. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O oh, my people, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. We have a, the 130th Psalm. We will read responsively. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, in order that you may be feared. 
I wait for you, O Lord. My soul waits, and your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning. More than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous redemption. For the Lord shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Second reading is from Romans, the eighth chapter. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in flesh cannot please God. But you who are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies as through his Spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. The 11th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany. The village of, Mary, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. And her brother, her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after... Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? And Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world, and those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he'll be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, and they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. Let us go unto him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been dead, had already been in the 
in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe in that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went, went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village and was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. Mary, the Martha, the the sister of the dead, Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, Already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may, they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. His hands and feet were bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary had seen what Jesus did, and they believed in him. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. As many of you who have heard me and know me uh, know I love the blues. And one of my favorite blues artists is Albert King. And he had an old song that, was, that said, everybody wants to go to heaven, but no one wants to die. That's, you know, that's the dilemma we're li- Living. That's the journey we're living here, 
here in, in Lent as we prepare in, less, in a little over a week to begin that journey of Holy Week, to begin the, the final steps of the journey to the cross and the empty tomb. And as I will often say to people, you cannot experience the resurrection unless you're willing to experience also the crucifixion. To, to truly experience the resurrection, we need, we need to die. We need to experience the glory of God as Jesus talks about. Experience the glory of God rise, raising us up transforming us into the people he has called us to be. The persons, the humans that he has called us to be. That we are, that we are people, we are humans, we are, we are persons who are free from sin and death. That not even the grave can contain us, can keep us from experiencing the presence of God. God's presence in our lives. And that 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 is what the crucifixion and the resurrection are all about. That is what this story of Lazarus is all about. As we hear in this story, no one no one is getting that. Not even Mary and Martha who are some of his closest people, the, the people, the persons who are closest to him. The only one who seems to have a clue about it is doubting Thomas, or whatever you want to call Thomas. Thomas is the one who says, yeah, let's go with, let's go with Jesus, that we can die with him. Let us go... What he didn't add to that is that so that we may also live with him. So that we may also live with Jesus. And that is what this journey is about. This journey of Lent that we've been on and this journey that we begin next week with Palm Passion Sunday through through good through Monday, Thursday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday with the resurrection. And as a good friend of mine used to say, I just really encourage you, you know, come for the whole meal, just don't come for dessert. Come and experience what the crucifixion, what Jesus saying goodbye uh, to his disciples. To leave them in their, in their grief and their loss so that he may do what God has called him to do. And it's important for us to experience that for ourselves. Experience what it is to be, to, to die to ourselves, to die to our own egos, to die with what we think it ought to be. I think, I, you know, I'm being a little cynical here, but I think that's really what everybody, why everybody wants to go to heaven, because they think they're going to get everything they want there. It isn't, and that isn't what the resurrection is about. It isn't about getting what I want. It's about doing what God wants for, for me, for my life around me, for the world around me. That's the journey we're on. And I invite you to be a part of that journey. Be a part of that whole journey through Holy Week. Experience Experience the life, the love of the resurrection. But to do that, be willing to walk through 
the grief, the pain, the loss of the crucifixion. We will be saying on Easter Sunday, he is risen. He is risen indeed. May that be true for all of us in all of our lives, that we know the presence of the risen Jesus each and every day of our life. Amen. Please stand and join in singing, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. was on earth our flesh was very weak he took a towel and girded himself and he washed his disciples feet jesus is a rock Join me as we confess our faith together through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, for the world, and all of God's creation. Let us pray. You have breathed into us the breath of life. Enliven your church. Deepen our partnerships with our companion churches around the globe. And bless the work of missionaries who accompany them. Merciful God. Lord, your spirit brings life to creation. Enliven the natural world. Restore ecosystems in need of healing. Uplift prophetic voices that turn us to the needs of the soil beneath our feet and the air that we breathe. Merciful God. Lord, you redeem the world and its peoples. Free us from systems of oppression. Unbind nations and societies from the sins of racism. Raise up leaders at all levels of government who work to promote the dignity of every human life. Most merciful God. Lord, you weep when we weep. 
Be present with those who grieve or who are troubled by illness. We especially lift up those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit this day. We pray for Tara and Joanne, for John, for Don, for Kent and Emily, for Bev and Kim, for Rick, for Jean and Joan. We pray for Dolores and Mike and Donna. And Lord, we lift up to you those loved ones that we hold in our own hearts. Lord, you remind us that you hear us when we call out to you. Deliver us from the depths of our despair. and Free us from the worries that bind us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lord, your spirit of life dwells in our assembly. Bless the music ministries of this congregation and all who lead us in hymns of praise and thanksgiving and in songs of lament and prayer. Most merciful God, receive our prayer. Lord, you are the resurrection and the life that even though we die, we will live. With thanksgiving, we remember all your saints who now live in your eternal love. Merciful God, we lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to turn as you're comfortable to share a sign of that peace with one another.
Let us pray. God of good gifts, receive now these and all of our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Jesus Christ, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. You Savior, King of creation, Son of God, and Son of Man. Truly I love Thee, truly I serve the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's table has been prepared and all are invited. Be seated, please.
to please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And let us pray. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you on this Lenten journey. Amen. now in peace to serve and love. Thanks be to God.